face. It's just snow everywhere. Ah, malamig. Yeah, it's just so old. Hello, mga Mars, and welcome again for another episode of Oscar related videos. So for today, um, I'm gonna discuss about three uh, common barriers that I've often noticed no, on our overseas nurses no, in terms of how they prepare for their OSCE. Because guys, uh, along the way, no, when you're already practicing for your OSCE, uh, you're really gonna find it a struggle no, if you're not able to identify these three uh, major barriers. So I'm gonna discuss on this one and hopefully, guys, uh, it can help you as well no, when you're preparing for your OSCE. Whether you are still back home in your home country, or you are already in here in UK and doing your 10 days no isolation isolation period. Anyhow, let's just see. Oh, mga kamars, one thing pala no, to remember is that focusing on our goal no, when passing the OSCE no, is not enough. We have to understand as well the journey itself. You know, that along the way, we will encounter hardships. We will encounter a lot of failures, no? especially when we are practicing. And often, no, if we're not prepared for it, it will make us disappointed, frustrated, just make us more anxious or stressed no? about ourselves, about how are we gonna be able to perform no? in the OSCE. But guys, uh, those steps no, are necessary in order for us to equip ourselves no? to be a better uh, candidate or a better representation of ourselves no, when we are taking for OSCE. As what they say, the struggles that you are in today are developing the strength that you need for tomorrow. So barrier number one now of ours, um, lack of understanding no, the subject matter. So for now, of course, we are dealing with OSCE. So, ano ba yung alam natin or what we've known so far about OSCE? So, for now guys, uh, OSCE basically is the last step no, that we need to take in order for us no, to get our pin and work here as a prison nurse in UK. Um, it consists of six stations, so which includes of course your uh, assessment, planning, implementation, evaluation, and two nursing skills that can range from INTP, uh, uh, doing some injections, subcut, IM, uh, doing uh, urine testing, and removal of catheter. And we have as well to realize that those uh, stations are timed. Now, for example, assessment uh, takes 12 minutes instead of 15 minutes before. Uh, planning, implementation, and your evaluation are 15 minutes. Uh, nursing skills can range from 8 no, to 15 minutes, but because we are not doing VLS for now no, uh, due to the pandemic, so let's say 12 to 15 minutes. So like your NTP, it's gonna take 15 minutes. And Mars, when are they gonna implement no, the new changes no, in the OSCE uh, uh, setting? So, so far guys, what I've known is uh, it's gonna be in April, but uh, I haven't received any uh, recent um, emails regarding if it's really gonna be confirmed. So, so far, we're still doing these six stations. And so how can I prepare for my OSCE then? I'm still back home and have no idea about OSCE. So guys, um, there's a lot of resources, no, online resources that we can use no, even if you are still uh, in, our, in our home country or you are already doing your isolation period. So the three testing centers, the Oxford Books, the Northampton, and the Ulster University have their um, information regarding OSCE and it's really, really helpful to read those details because um, they give you ideas about uh, how many um, uh, attempts you can have uh, regarding the candidate information itself you know, or in general and I can also gonna give you a link you know, below and you can have a look at it as well. Uh, textbooks, uh, we're still using the uh, Drill Marston Manual you know, of Clinical Nursing Procedures and uh, also the one based on the Resuscitation Council. Um, you can watch a lot of YouTube videos and I can also give you a link no, on some of the videos that I've used no, uh, in helping my, or in helping our overseas nurses to prepare no, for their OSCE. And as well guys, in, uh, on top of understanding the subject matter itself, 
we need as well to understand no, our strength, no, our weaknesses. Kasi uh, during your practice, uh, it will might you might find it a struggle really no, to perform no, if you're not uh, able to identify these uh, weaknesses. No, for example, you are scared not performing in front of people or when someone is watching you. So ngayon pa lang mga kamars, you have to do something about it. No, you might ask your friends, your family members, no, watch you while you are performing a task, and eventually, no, you will develop this confidence no, that you need no, in order for you to pass your OSCE. And the bottom line is, uh, you are doing something. What did you do no, to to help yourself no, to improve yourself, and that you do not gonna experience the same thing when you are having an OSCE. And these guys, no, if you are already here in the UK and doing your OSCE preparation, please, please no, don't hesitate no, to ask questions no, from your educators or from your mentors, no? um, especially if you are in doubt no, of something. And remember, Makamars, it's never no, a sign of weakness no, when you're asking about no, something, especially if it, if it will help you no, to perform better no, in your OSCE. Barrier number two, mga kamars, is poor no, communication. And you know how important communication is no, in OSCE. Also, in involving the patient no, in decision making no, and gain consent. For example, uh, Miss Eddie, I'm here to, to do your vital signs no, that includes checking for your blood pressure, your temperature, your pulse rate, respiratory rate, and your oxygen saturation. Are you happy for me to proceed? Or would you like me to refer you to the counseling team so that they can give us more adva advice on how you can manage your situation right now? And remember guys, communication is not just verbal. It can also be non-verbal in terms of how we observe our patient and written no? in terms of how we document no, our data or how we do our planning and evaluation papers. And you know mga kamaras, so important communication is not just in OSCE, but of course, no, in general, in everything that we do, uh, in terms of uh, are we still having a valid IELTS or a CBT no, before we take our OSCE? Are we able to bring all the requirements we need no, when we are taking our OSCE? Are we also uh, communicating with our educators, with our uh, mentors no, for any problems no, we have no, before we take our OSCE? Uh, for example, as, uh, as what I've told you on the previous blog, if you have any concern about your health, are we able to tell you in advance so that they can also support us guys, no? especially no, during the exam itself. And a third part of my Kamaras is a poor exam technique. Because no matter how hard you practice, but then on your OSCE itself, you don't have a proper game plan, no? a strong game plan on how to attack the situation, then you're still gonna end up messing with your OSCE. And uh, for example, mga kamars is in your assessment. Uh, remember, as what I told you before, you are given five minutes. So the question there is, how are you gonna utilize your five minutes in order for you to perform better no, on, your, uh, in, on your assessments um, time? And you know it's only 12 minutes. So, are you be able to look for context clues? Are you be able to read the instructions carefully on what are the things not expected uh, of you to do? And are you be able to prioritize those information? And are you be able you know, to execute the plan? What is your plan? What is your game plan? So even if you are still studying mga kamars, you, need, you, you really need to have you know, a good game plan. Are you be able to divide the task into small parts? No? For example, you know, what I usually do in our, uh, with our overseas nurses uh, in assessment, I ask them you know, to divide the task into three parts. The introductory, the documentary part, and the ADL part. Kasi if you divide the task into three, it makes it easier no, when you practice because when you have it as a group sometimes it will overwhelm you and it will end uh, it, and it will make you disappointed because you're not hitting you know, the target 
but why not just divide it into parts, small part first, so that when you are feeling more confident you know, in your introductory part, then proceed with your documentary part. And then if you're happy with that one, then your ADL part. And then later on, if everything is, if you, you think that it's already good, then have a go. Try finishing everything in one go, and we will see the difference. A good exam technique as well, guys, is on how flexible you are. Uh, are you be able to identify you know, a different setup? Is it in a community setting or a hospital setting? Do they have a name band? Do they have a call bell? Or are you in a nursing care home or in a GP clinic? So you need to be aware of the setup or the type of scenarios itself. Are you having a patient who, are going for, who is going for surgery? Are you being able to identify the consent, the Milbemot status, or the VTE risk assessment of the patient? But Mars, it's easy for you to say, but it's hard for us to do. Mm -mm. Remember mga kamars, no? our anxiety and nerves are part and parcel of life, no? especially when it means something so much no? to us. So that is why you know, so many pe people uh, feel anxious about an examination because it means so much to them. No? It's their last step perhaps no? in fulfilling their dream. And our dream for now is of course passing the OSCE and become a UKRN. And remember, do not let your anxiety no? dictate your performance no? on the OSCE because no matter how hard you practice and then your anxiety kicks in and overrule your entire performance then you're still gonna end up messing everything and you don't want that thing to happen no? so try to do some deep breathing try to calm yourself try to do some yoga, exercise no? whatever thing that works best for you know, to help you feel relaxed and always, always have a positive attitude and mga kamars, please no, don't lose hope. No? Keep chasing your dream. No? Keep chasing your dream. And make that dream no, into reality. Although for now, some of you are still experiencing a lot of hardships no, in terms of uh, the paper processing, the painful waiting no, for deployment. But still, no, keep holding on it. And, ev and eventually, you will reap no, the harvest of success. And always focus on uh, on the light at the end of the tunnel. And bye, Makamars for now, and hope to see you around.